welcome to Conversations with Masesi, where my guest and I talk about life, family, love, community, and everything in between. Love is in the air. Joining me is my daughter, Standiwe. Hi, Standiwe. Welcome to Conversations. Hi, thank you for having me. Today we're talking about love. Yes. And maybe you're asking, what does love got to do with this, right? <laughs> but I want us to talk about, let's start first with, where did you learn about love, loving? You know, all those things that pertains to love. I think learning about love obviously starts in the home. Like, mm -hmm. if you're not loved, how are you going to learn how to love? And I think that most of the time people define love in the way that they've experienced it. So if you grew up with a very giving parent and that's the way they were loved, you probably show other people your love by giving. So I think definitely at home in the way love was expressed was the first place that I learned about it. That's where you learned about love. That's where you learned about being loved as well, right? And now when we take it, we, then we take it further. Because in a family, you have different kind of people. And we all have to coexist. And we have to love the good of the person and the bad of the person. But, you know, for, for now, let's talk about mother-daughter love. What does that mean to you? I think mother-daughter love changes. Like, it's definitely not been the same my whole life and probably the same for you. Mm -hmm. I think that in different stages of life, it looks different, but at the end of the day, it's still love and you can still appreciate it no matter, like, where you are. But now, how do you maneuver those changes, especially when, when you're thinking it's unfair? You know how sometimes you go, I don't think you love me. And, and it's not because, you know how sometimes somebody will say that, and it's not because they, they, they honestly don't feel the love, but it's because where they are at, it's not, you're not giving them what they need. I think that when it comes to that, honestly, it's just communication because you don't know what somebody needs unless they tell you. Like, I always tell you, I can't read your mind. So if you tell me what you need at that point or where you need support emotionally, um, I know like everyone's very willing to give you that, but it's hard sometimes if you don't communicate it because you don't know what exactly the person needs. Do you equate love with freedom? Like if I love you, I give you freedom to do what you need to be doing. I think I equate it more with understanding. Okay. So kind of seeing everyone's point of view, everybody's side of the story. So I might necessarily want freedom in a certain way, but because you love me, you know that that thing is maybe unsafe or something. Mm -hmm. And so you might withhold that. So just because it's not the type of freedom I want, it doesn't mean that you're not understanding of where I'm coming from and vice versa. Then what about responsibility? I think that... So if... If I give you more responsibility um, or, or you, I let you be responsible over so many things, does that communicate love to you? I think or so. Or not even maybe to you personally, but especially people your age group. Because you, when you yeah. talk to friends, you know, you know what you all like, yeah. right? I think that in the long run it does because especially going to university and things you see how different people were raised and you see the different maturity levels and responsibility levels so mm -hmm. at the time that that's given to a child I don't think it's quite appreciated but I think that it is definitely showing love because later on in life it's something that they can utilize and that they're glad that they had that skill set even though it might not have been something they wanted to do in that's the beginning. Right. Yeah, You know well, how we always say Oh, you know, the girls always are loved by their dads. Do you think that's true or it's just a myth? Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. And But how is it different from mommy's love then? Oh, you know. I think that it honestly, it's person to person, case to case. But I think that traditionally most people say that because dads love their girls in a more kind of provider way almost or in a more like giving way whereas mothers tend to show the girls more emotional support mm -hmm. than the fathers which I'm not saying is true for everyone um, but I think that why people say that is because most of the time the dad is the one doing this 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 buying this 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 and that's what people see on the outside mm -hmm. but at the end of the day sometimes if you need a shoulder to cry on it's going to be your mom. So I think that's why so, people make that assumption. So the female figure connects emotionally. 
yeah than the main figure and obviously dads can be capable of connecting emotionally as well but for the most part the person you're going to go to is your mom yeah now let's talk about do you when you know when teenagers reach that buying power stage they start working they can do things and we tend to be butting heads you know with children with their parents we butt heads when that stage comes do you know why i have no idea why like what what why is it that when i'm going to say you guys not in a bad way but i'm going to say you guys when you start thinking that you can you know you get a job you can do your things you're thinking i don't need you i think it's because um throughout your whole childhood your parents are telling you well it's my house it's my money it's my this my this my this <laughs> so the second that you have ownership over something of your own you think that that's the power that you're able to have almost because i'm not saying all parents do this but sometimes it feels almost like a form of control okay. um when everything's my this my this my this because i bought it so now when your kids start working and they have their own money and they have their own interests and their own things that they're expressive in they're very possessive of it mm -hmm. because that's how they've seen possessions and money being modeled you just said they the right way they're modeled i know when we were sitting with um our coach during conversations she talked a lot about modeling how we model things and how whatever it is that it the young ones see is because they've seen it at home and i'm glad that you bring it up but now to come to be conscious about not modeling all those things i think as parents we we need to get to a point where we don't you know let me let me trace trace it back to when you were a toddler when children are toddlers you you tell them what to do you know they push boundaries and you know you do that but when they they get to that buying power stage I, I become the toddler as a parent because now I want to, <laughs> I throw tantrums if you don't come on time. I do all those things. But you as a young person, how do we bridge that gap so that we get an understanding and, and you know, love each other for who we are, especially in the stages that we're in? Honestly, just again, it's about communication because if I don't know, like let's say I start working, I get a job, if I don't know what you as a parent expect of me, I'm just gonna go wherever I feel is okay. Mm -hmm. And if I don't know that that affects you some type of way or anything, how am I supposed to, you know, fix that or change that? And then as parents, or as a child as well, just con um, communicating to your parents what you want and how you want it. And then obviously you can ask them for advice, whether you take it or not, just like knowing where everyone's head is at. So you don't know if some someone's hurting something if it's not communicated. And if you ask for advice, I give you advice and you don't take it. And that puts a strain on our relationship. So how do we maneuver that? Personally, I do that all the time. I think both of my parents are very wise people. Um, so I do ask for their perspective on a lot of situations, but a lot of the times I might not take their advice. And I think what's comforting is knowing that they've done that with their parents and that <laughs> their mistakes, <laughs> their mistakes are the only reason that, not the only reason, but one of the reasons they have all this wisdom and all of this advice. So I think that taking things to heart but also just doing what you feel is best for you because obviously we're all different people that's right yeah. um even though your parents might have raised you they might not like necessarily know how you're going to act in si certain situations that haven't presented themselves before so i think that not taking it personal if i don't take your advice <laughs> is good then i know that okay yeah she's not taking it today do you think micromanaging is love if i micromanage you do you think i love you um, I don't think, I think sometimes people think that it is love, but I think from the receiving side, it mm -hmm. doesn't come off as love. Because from the giving side, as a parent, sometimes I think it's the right thing to do. And that way I'm keeping check that you at the right place doing the right thing. And for me, I'm thinking it's love. But I, when I find out from you that this is not love when you do this, it means you don't trust me. So it broke that trust and it brought that butting of heads, right? And and obviously we, had, we have to sit down and talk about it and come to an understanding that, okay, let's put some things in place of how we're gonna do this, when we're gonna do it, you know, so that it, with that understanding, 
we build a relationship of trust where we love each other unconditionally and we accept each other whatever stage of life we are at. Like I keep saying, I think it's about communication, honestly, when it comes to micromanaging. Like one of my least favorite lines is, I told you so. (laughs) And (laughs) just not getting an explanation as to why. Like if I want to go a certain place and one of my parents is like, no, you can't go. I'm like, what? But if I hear that they're like, oh, it's because this happened at this time or these friends of yours get up to this. If I get reasons why it's like understanding where they're coming from. And I think that kind of form of micromanaging is okay. Um, And I think, yeah, I just think it's about letting them know exactly why you're saying what you're saying. And even if you don't know, just be like, hey, I have a gut feeling. And whether I take that advice or not is up to me. But just honestly saying why your micromanaging I think is important. You and I have this strong bond of love and it didn't just happen, we worked on it. What is the one thing you want to tell your peers about how to build a strong bond of love with their mothers especially? I think just understanding that as much as we're young and this is our first time doing like so many things in the world this is also your mom's first time raising you like you have you've never had a child in university yes. you've never had a child that started driving before me and my brother started driving That's right, yeah. you've never had a child do this 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 so i think sometimes as kids we feel like our parents know everything but in reality it's all just like i look at it as, as an experiment Like, let's try this, let's try this, let's try this. And if it doesn't work, it's okay. And I think also just giving your parents the same grace. I had to learn this, but giving the same grace to your parents as you would like them to give to you Mm -hmm. is really important because it's our first time doing everything. So we're just see what works. It is. We're actually growing together. And to my fellow mothers who want to be loved by daughters and love their daughters, my advice to them is let them be. Let them be and love them where they are at and who they are because I think we want to raise our children to be something else but my advice is love them according to their band. Thank you so much for coming to Conversations today. It's been such a pleasure having you. Thanks for And we keep the love going. Each child is different but parenting goals for each are the same. Their strategies to reach these goals will depend largely on the child the family situation, as well as the experience and background of the parents. Thankfully, there are many resources available for those who want to improve their parenting skills. Remember to like, share, subscribe, follow us on all our social media platforms to keep the conversation going. Thank you for joining us on Conversations. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you and yours. Shalom. Shalom.